Hey everyone, in this lecture, we'll be talking about data compression. And you will recall that the entropy, as we have already established, is the data compression limit, as well as the number of bits needed in random number generation, and also the codes achieving the entropy H are said to be optimal. And then data compression can therefore be achieved by assigning short descriptions to the most frequent outcomes of the data source following from Moscow and long description to the less frequent outcomes. And given a communication system, we have the source encoder and then the channel encoder. What actually will be the minimum number of bits, or better still, the number of bits on the average that can be used to describe the code word needed to be transmitted from the source? So we now have to talk about source, source, source code words. Okay, and that is source code. And then we see that a source code says C for a random variable, let's say for a random variable X is a mapping from say x in the range of x to the asterisk such that the set of finite length strings of the symbols from a d array alphabet can be achieved. So if C of X, for instance, denotes the code word. It is the code word corresponding to X of one. And then L of X denotes the length, the length of the code word, the length of C of X. Then the expected length L of, L of C, that's the average length, the expected length of the source code C of S for a random variable X with probability distribution function P of X can therefore be given as L of C being the expected value of the length of the code for x being an element of x, right? So in this case, L of x is the length of the code word associated with x associated with X. Now, in order to check for the optimality of the code, the value of the entropy has to be as close as possible to the value of the length, or the expected length L of C, that is H of X, must be less or equal to the expected length of the code. So as such, this defines the entropy bound on data compression. And to put this more formally, the entropy bound, entropy bound on data Compression is 
is given by the length, the expected length, which is equivalent to the expected value of the code length, should be greater or equal to the entropy bound data compression. So it follows therefore directly that the code efficiency, which is the measure of optimality of the code, the code efficiency eta will now be the same as the ratio of the entropy and the expected code length. The efficiency, or better still, code efficiency determines. the optimality of the code. Why the code redundancy, gamma, for instance, is the same as one minus the code efficiency. And you should note that the lower the, the lower the redundancy, the better the data compression. So in other words, data compression has to do with the removal of redundant bits. That's data compression. And then when we come to talk about channel codes, they will now realize that the channel codes requires redundant bits for error correction, right? Okay, so. So let's talk about a few codes. Non-singular codes. Now, a code is said to be non-singular if every element of the range X maps into a different string in D, such that X is not the same as X prime. That is, the code word C of X is not the same as the code word C of F prime. So in other words, you'll observe that the non-singular code is a one-to-one -one mapping. One, two, one. Mapping. And this is sufficient for an ambiguous decoding. And don't forget that decoding actually means inverse mapping, right? So then, we have extension codes, which is the same as the concatenation, concatenation of codes, concatenation of codes, such that the extension CSR of a code, the extension of surface of a code, say C, is the mapping from finite length strings of X to a finite length string of D, defined by, say, C of X1, X2, all the way to Xn, will be the same as C, let's say, C of X1, C of X1, my goodness, C of X1, C of X2, all the way to C of C of X N to C of X N. So if we assume that C of X one is the same as zero one, and C of X two is the same as one zero, then C of X one, C of S2 will be the same as 0, 1, 1, 0. So these are 
concatenated. So uniquely, Now, a code is said to be uniquely decodable if its extension satisfies the one-to-one -one mapping. That is, it is uniquely decodable if it is an extension code that is non-singular. It's not singular meaning satisfies the one to one map. That is, any encoded string is a uniquely decodable code. And that is, it has only one possible source string producing it, okay? And then we now have prefix or instantaneous calls. Now a code is said to be prefix free or an instantaneous code if no code word is a prefix of any other code word. Let's assume 0, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now in this case, 0, Let's change the color. Zero is a prefix of zero one because in zero one we have zero as a prefix. Hence, this is not a prefix free or an instantaneous code. But should we have zero one zero one one? Then you will observe that no code word. Is a prefix of another code, of another code word. Hence, they are prefix free and then they are instantaneous codes. So, you should note that the end of a code word is recognizable without examining subsequent code symbols. Because by observing these code symbols, then we can see that it's a prefix to this. But observing this, we can see there is no other code word that is a prefix of the other code word. So, in instantaneous codes, each symbol can be decoded as soon as the corresponding code word is complete or completed. That is, it is not necessary to see the bits of later symbols in order to decode the current symbol. Also note that a uniquely decodable code is said to be instantaneous if it is possible to decode each code word in a sequence without reference to succeeding code words. And now we'll talk about a sufficient condition to check if a code is either instantaneous, instantaneous, or better still, if it is prefix free, or if it is uniquely decodable. Okay. And this condition follows directly from craft inequality, which has been extended. And then we also look at the craft Macmillan inequality. Now, the craft inequality states that for any instantaneous code or prefix code over an alphabet size D, alphabet size D, the code word length L1, L2, L3, all the way, say L sub M, that is the code word length, code word length, must satisfy the inequality, sigma, sum of the alphabet size to the power of what length negative equivalent length must be less than or equal to one for all. Parts. 
So hence, given a set of cohort lengths that satisfies this inequality, there exists an instantaneous code with this cohort length. And then, when we take the limit to some infinite uh, prefix code, so there's an extension to it. So if we are given an infinite prefix code, we extended craft inequality, therefore states that for any countable infinite set of code words, that is any countable infinite set of code words that forms a prefix code, the code word length must satisfy the inequality for i taking on values from one to infinity and the alphabet size, the power of negative code word length should be less than or equal to one. And conversely, given any L1, that's uh, code word length, L1, L2, L3, all the way, satisfying the extended crafting quality, we can actually construct a prefix code with these code words. So there's a possibility of constructing a prefix code and the code words. And then subsequently, the craft Macmillan Millan inequality therefore states that the code word length code word length S of I of any uniquely decodable code of any uniquely decodable DRA code must satisfy the craft inequality, which is the craft inequality, S of I, S of I less by one. That is, given a set of code word lengths that satisfies this inequality, it is possible to construct a uniquely decodable code. This code word lengths. So the consequences of the Kraft Macmillan inequality follows directly. Right. That the inequality holds. With strict, in, with strict equality, for instance, so if the inequality holds with strict equality, then the code is complete or is complete. And if it holds with strict inequality, for instance, then the code has some redundancy. And what if it doesn't hold? So if it doesn't hold, does not hold, then the code is not unique. So let us consider this example. So let's assume we have S of I, we have with A, with B, with C, and with B, right? 
Okay. So, uh, x1, x2, x3, x4. This is one uh, distribution. So, so let's say the code was uh, 0, 0, 0, 1. And zero and one is zero and zero and one and zero uh, zero and zero zero okay zero and zero one zero zero and one zero so now if we consider code A, see that the craft McMillan inequality is the one, two, four, about one, two, three, four code words, and the code size is two because we're doing binaries to minus L, X. And here, in the first instance, we have the length of S1 is two, the length of S2, that's the number of bits, is two. And they are all two, so this will be the sum of that to the power of minus two, which is two to the power of minus two plus two to the power of minus two plus two to the power of minus two plus two to the power of minus two, which is one over four plus one over four plus one over four, with one over four, which is equal to one. And now by inspection, we observe that no code word is a prefix to another code. Code word. So in other words, this code. It's prefix free, and since it satisfies the crack macmillan inequality, it is uniquely decodable. So should we transmit this over the channel, we are certain that at the receiver, we will not have to confuse which symbol is meant for which, because each are uniquely decodable. And for code B, follows directly also, power minus Li, that is the length here is one, plus two to the power of minus one, plus two to the power of minus two, minus two, and three, the length here is three, plus two to the power of minus two, plus two to the power of minus two. And this will give us one, one over eight, which is greater than one. And we also observe here, that this does not satisfy craft macmillan inequality, okay? Because it is greater than one. Hence, it is not uniquely decoded. But by inspection, you observe that no, okay, yeah, this is a prefix of this, and as such, it is not prefix free, it's not an instantaneous code either. Now for C, now C I for one, then four to the power minus four I, then the length is one, two, three, three, four minus one, plus two, power two, minus two, power minus three, plus two, power minus three. That's going to give us uh, one over two, plus one over four, one over one over. That's going to give us one. Okay, this satisfies craft inequality, but. Here, it is not an instantaneous code because this code word is a prefix of this code. So it is not a prefix free code, it is not an instantaneous code, and it is not unique. Code, despite the fact that it has not been an instantaneous Now let's check the third code here. Then we have two to the power of minus one plus two to the power of minus three. The length, the number of uh, bits in this code word is three, so that's the length. So plus two to the power of minus three, plus two to the power of minus three. And this will give us seven over a, which is less than one. And by inspection, see that no code word is a prefix of another code word. Okay, 
It's one one zero one 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 zero one 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 zero zero one 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 zero. So yeah, prefix free. Prefix free code. And also to satisfy the craft Macmillan in the quality pens here, quickly decode the role. Okay. Let's talk about Hoffman. Now, this is an algorithm used for the construction of optimal codes with uh, shortest expected length, but then as the short optimal shortest expected length with its codes. Okay. Uh, what are optimal codes? Right, before we go into this, optimal codes. Optimal codes. So let's, let's get rid of this first. Okay, well, it's no problem. Now, an optimal code, let us the code set to optimal, if first it is instantaneous, and then it has an average length, L, for a given source, with a given probability assignment, for the source. Now, here, we're saying that the Hoffman coding scheme actually derives an optimal code. We'll see that shortly. And this algorithm can be summarized into two folds, the first of which is reduction. Reduction. And then splitting. Now, under the reduction arm, stick it this way. The first thing is to list the source symbols in order of decreasing probabilities. So this Then you want to reduce to this probable symbols. One symbol probability. So they are combined. Then you want to reorder. Okay? You want to reorder again for that. So, yeah. Then you want Stage and okay. we will repeat this operation. Until we have just two symbols. For the splitting, first of this, assign zeros and ones to the two final symbols to symbols. And walk backward. Afterwards, expand or lengthen the code to cope with successive splits. 
Afterwards, each stage extinguish between the split writing another zero one. Still, so, so, zero and one respectively. So, with this, we are able to develop instantaneous and uniquely decodable code words using the probability distribution. The symbols. Let's consider a simple example. So, if we have that, we have about one, two, three, four, five symbols with probability distributions zero and four, nine, zero, six, and five, and zero and one. So, uh, using Hoffman. Coding algorithm. First, arrange in order of decreasing probabilities that has been done here. So we have A, B, C, D. That is 0, 4, 0, 1, 9, 0, 6, 5. Then the next is to reduce the two least probable. These are the two least probable. So we add them together. That's going to give us 0 0.25. So we'll order again in order of decreasing probability. So that's going to be just below 0 0.4. So it is 0 0.4. We have 0 0.25. So this comes down. 0 0.9. This comes down to 6. So they are again ordered in that order of decreasing probability. So we're going to repeat this process again. We we'll add this, so we're going to get to three five. That's the division four. So that's here three five. Then this still is above it four. Then this one to two. two. Then we we'll put that again. This going to be zero point six. So we have zero point six. Then this comes all the way zero point. Or add this up so we have one. Then the next thing is to begin to assign zero and one to the two final symbols and then we walk backwards. So let's change the color. We'll add zero, one. And now we walk backwards. So in tracing, 0 0.4 has the same probability distribution and the symbol is one. You can see all the way, right? So one. But now the 0 0.6 in tracing that is coming this way now. You observe that I now place 0, 0. Okay, because it's on the two parts, right? In this split. But afterwards, we now have to expand and lengthen the code to code with each successive split. So at this stage, we distinguish between the two split symbols by adding another zero and one. So let us say we change the color here again, we add a zero and one, zero, one. Okay. So at this point now, this again traces down, so let's take this. It's the same here, so we have Zero one coming from this part, and once we trace again coming on this part, so this applies to these two splits. So that's zero, zero, 
zero zero and just like the previous stage and we assign another zero and one to distinguish between this split and this split zero one now we look at this carefully so this applies to this so this is zero 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 right then this zero zero one zero zero one and now we have to trace the zero one and probably the distribution of 0 0.25 and then that applies to this split 0 1 0 1 right now we have to distinguish between the split and the split by adding another 0 1 and another 0 1 so we are done and now by the table of summary symbols of the probability distribution then we have the words we have A, B, C, D. Okay. So for A, we have 0 0.4 has lovely distribution to the time, 0.6, 0 0.15. The total number of bits or code words we have your bits is one. That's one. Here we have zero 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 zero. And here we have zero zero one one. And here we have zero one zero zero one zero. And here we have zero one one zero one. So now we can estimate the code efficiency. Don't forget it's the entropy divided by the expected length and we already know that the expected length is the same as the expected value of the code word length so this will now be 0 0.4 times 1 if the length is 1 plus 0 0.19 times 3 length plus 3 plus 0 0.16 times 3 also plus 0 0.15 times 3 then plus 0 0.1 times 3 as the length of 4 and this will give us 2.2 bits per symbol then we know that the entropy which of x is the expected value of the information, which is log one. Okay. Once again, the zero point four log one of that zero four, the zero point one nine or one over nine plus zero point one six or one over zero point six plus zero point one five or one over zero point five zero point one or one over zero. I know that we are dealing in base two, and if you want to resolve this in base two, say zero point four or one over zero point four, since it's base two. Uh, if you are not able to estimate that directly to your calculating device, you know this will be the same as changing. Um, change of date of 0 0.4 divided by log to this term 1 over 0 0.4 divided by log to this term log to this term, right? So this will give you the same as this. So by changing to um, by change of dates, okay? So and then this now will give us 2.15 bits or symbol. So the efficiency therefore will be 2.2, right? 2.15, sorry. That's the entropy. And one five divided by the code length. So 
is going to give us 0 0.977, which should give us 97.7%. So let's say with Hoffman, but 97.7%. So hence, summarily, we can say that for the Hoffman cleaning system, after entropy, description, less than or equal to the length, the length of the expected length, then this should be less than the reference to them, where the expected length is given as the minimization of the expected length. Okay. Such that taking values is in the crafting quality is less of the government. So let us consider the shining. So this algorithm utilizes the cumulative distribution function to have a code words. Here, the algorithm follows directly. So the first thing is to list the source symbols in order of decreasing probabilities. Then second again is to partition. Okay. Partition. Partition is set into two. Partition is set to two sets that are close to the equal one. Possible. Then we want to assign. Okay, so let's take this as a fourth. Then afterwards, we assign a zero to the upper set. Upper set. And then to the lower set. So this process will be continued until no partition is possible. Okay? So the step here is to continue the process. Step two and three. Each time, partition set it similarly for the point. Sorry, To the function. It's impossible. So, if we use the previous example, so have uh, A, B, C instance, at the ability distribution is 0.4. 0 0.19, 0 0.6, 0 0.5, then 0 0.5. So if we add up these two, 
and then add this up. Then you see something that is like at least it could go up. Okay, so 0 0.1, 0 0.4 plus 0 0.19, that's about 0 0.59, 0, 0, 0 spot, 0 0.59. And then on this part, we are going to have about 0 0.4. And right, so and okay. so this is uh, this one that's three. And if we put the other way around, then the difference will be too much. Okay, so this is uh, nearly equal in terms of speed. So if that is that, I'm going to repeat this stage. So you no know, further partition is possible. So the next step is to assign zero to the upper set, now like zero, zero. Okay. Then let's use different colors again. So this one. So assign zero to the upper set. Then we assign one to the lower set. So, and then we now have to split again, but this part we have just two possible options. So to split this and then we can assign zero to one. Okay. Then we have this split. So if we add this up as uh, one and three point zero against zero point one. So that's if we add this two. So this one option. So if we add 0 0.1 and 0 0.15, and then if we say 0 0.15, and then we add the other, so that will be 0 0.1 plus 0 0.15 that's 0 0.25. This is more nearly provable than this, so we should go with this. Then we assign. Zeros the upper half, so it means this time we are splitting. Yeah, yeah. Assign zeros, zero to the upper half, split, and one on the split. Once again, we have just this two. So we can split this and zero on. So we have the code words there. So just like before, we have the symbols. And we have the probability distributions and then we have the words, right? We have A, B, C, D. So A we have 0 0.4, 0 0.9, 0 0.6. It was for zero point four for symbol A zero zero B zero one C one zero or D one one zero one one zero and for E one one one. Once again, the expected length, the expected value of code length, which is zero point four times two. First symbol, so 0 0.19 times two symbols again, plus 0 0.16 times two symbols again, plus 0 0.15 times two symbols, plus 0 0.1 times, oh sorry, this times three symbols, 0 0.1 times three symbols again. Then this can get two. And now we call that which of us, since we're using the same set of symbols and data, was 2.15 bits per symbol. Right? symbol. Now, for the efficiency, which of us, expected length, 
which is 2.15, five, 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 zero point six nine five rather six zero point nine five six yeah so nine six which is the same thing as ninety five point six percent now you see that the Hoffman code achieved ninety seven point seven percent so they are usually the Hoffman coding scheme or codes are usually referred to as optimal codes because they are more optimal Shannon codes and then for the last code, you see that uh, here, given the code length, the distribution, so uh, right. then possible condition to achieve. Entropy which should be less than length, effective, effective length, expected length, the average length less than. Plus, plus f of x to one, right? Now, what if we have a wrong code? Let's, let's consider wrong code. Meaning, mm. the wrong code is used to represent the same. So in wrong code, we have that the expected length under the probability distributions, the P of X, is uh, given as L of X, which is distribution on the X, right? And this satisfies the inequality, H of P, which is the entropy of the correct code word of the code plus the relative entropy in Q, and it should be less than the expected length of the code length, and this also must be less than just P plus relative entropy, then this one. Now, Russell, you'll recall from our previous lecture that if the wrong code is used for a distribution, say Q of X, so meaning the code is actually meant for P of X, and then it is now used for Q of X, we would need H of P, which is the entropy of the correct code, plus the relative entropy which is a measure of the relative distance between the correct code and the wrong code. It's on the average to describe the random variable. So we have this condition. So I think this is a good place to stop. And we'll pick things up from here in our next class. Bye for now.